Hi, and welcome back to Finders Beepers History Seekers. This week, I'm going to say I'm on my own, but I'm not. Rachel is literally just there. If you don't know, Rachel's my other half. Andy's not here. Andy's off in Scotland. I'm also in Scotland, but not with Andy. And I am in an amazing, amazing asylum. We've got to get around this place really, really quickly because there is on-site security. There's another building just down there where there's a wedding going on. There's some boy racers in a car park that way. So the likelihood of being caught is quite high. But I want to show you this place because it is fantastic. We've just had to come up some massive steps, like loads of steps up to the top floor. We're both exhausted. We're both unfit. So if you hear heavy breathing, that's why. I'm rushing this intro because I want to get out of this room and straight on to show you the explore. So let's go. Right, so a lot of these rooms up here are like the one we've just come out of. Very empty, very boring. And I'm not going to go around them all and show you. This place is massive as well. Absolutely huge. And it's not long since been cleared out. Now, when I get to the central area, you are going to be amazed by this place. It's not your mundane, boring, empty building. It's fantastic. So I'm going to hurry up and get to the right place. Right, so as we're walking towards that central bit, we're walking around all the little rooms and look at this I've just come across. There's definitely going to be some old features knocking about, but look at that bath. Look at the size of that tap. I don't think you understand how big that is as well. Look at my massive torch. It's literally the same size as the tap. But that is an old bath and an old sink. So these bits will have been shut off to the public most of the time. So we're getting to see little bits that nobody else will probably ever see. God for that, it's just for the women's toilet. That's absolutely scared me to death, that did. Now I think we've potentially got to one of the places I wanna see. So I think it's behind that door. So I'm gonna get my torch back off Rachel and I'll go and have a look. Right, before I go in there, look at it in here. Look at the state. Now this place hasn't been shut down that long really. But look at the mold. Now things are just falling down. This place needs absolutely ripping out and starting again. Anyway, let's get through here. I don't know if this is exactly the bit I was thinking about, but it's amazing. And don't forget this was an asylum. Look at this. This was to stop them chucking themselves over the edge when they were walked round. So they obviously had to come from the assessment areas and to where they were staying. And that's the reason these bits were built around the edge to stop them throwing themselves down. Now, I don't know how far down it goes. I'm scared to drop in the camera a bit. I'm not too far on this little bit, but this is amazing. I've never ever seen an asylum with things like this still in place. It's brilliant. Right, so this is a map of the place. Now we are, I think, here. I'm not quite sure. And the central bit we need to go to is there. Now I can't show all of this map purely because it says the name of the place at the top, but it is a huge, absolutely massive place. It's on about four, five floors. So it's going to take a lot to cover it. So we're going to whip round, but I just wanted to have a look at a couple of these wings before we go downstairs, just to see if there's anything else knocking about. Because I think <coughs> these are the bits where <coughs> people would have been kept. And like I said, any coughing in the background, don't worry, it's not a dodgy ghost, it's just Rachel. Right, going into the wings, like I said, it's all going to be empty, but you can still see a lot of the sort of original architecture and the big, massive archways and things like that. 
and you can just imagine him. Look, you can tell it's Victorian because there's still features here, even though it's all sort of blocked off and don't look quite right. It's still visible, the original features. And then, oh my God. And then you see the devastation, the destruction and how something like this, such an amazing building that they will have put millions and millions of pounds into has just turned to absolute shite. Right, I've just opened the door to the medical records office. Look at the size of this place. Look at all the, where all the files will have been. There must have been thousands and thousands of confidential medical stuff. Now, some of the places we've been to in the past have it just left here, but not far from here is the other newer part of this same hospital. And I reckon they will have just moved everything over there, which is good. I'm glad they have. Purely because, obviously, a lot of these people are still, like, go living in hospitals and one thing or another. It's not quite the same state as it used to be, the mental health service and the asylums and things like that. But people still take advantage and leave things about, and I don't want that to happen to anybody. So anyway, cracking on. Right. I've just opened a door that I've just been checking doors and I'm so glad I did because what's behind this door has just made me go, oh, I'm going to show you now. Look in here. Right, look at the ceilings. And then look down here. It's like, I don't know if it's a ballroom or a showroom or like for shows. I don't mean like a car showroom, but look at it. I don't know why I feel like people would sit up here and watch, but then I don't know how they would with this. Whether it was like they'd have the people that were in here down there doing whatever they were doing and then people watching them from up here to make sure they weren't up to anything dodgy, like smashing each other's faces in. I don't know. Now there's a plaque up there as well. And the worrying thing is it does actually say the name of the place on it, otherwise I'd show it. But I think, I can't work out whether it says 1834 or 1854. So this place has been around a hell of a long time. But look at the quality in these ceilings. Absolutely amazing. And all around the edges of the room as well. Anyway. Like I said, this is why we need to make our way downstairs. Right, straight out of that room, this is classroom six. Now, obviously, again, big empty room. We can see, continued through this side of the building, seems to be the really amazing ceilings. So I'm hoping as we get further around and further down, it's just gonna get better and better. Coming along this corridor, I've just noticed that above most of the rooms, a lot, what looks like little ventilation things. So I reckon even these rooms, once again, are bare and look like offices. I reckon this will have been the bedrooms of the asylum just to make sure that they can breathe properly. And because obviously the doors would be sealed quite tightly. They'd have some sort of ventilation. They probably would have had bars or something on the walls and sedated them and done all sorts of nasty stuff that they did in the asylums. Now think about it, think about being stuck in this room and actually you've come in because you're pregnant and you're 16 and not married and they're treating you like you're absolutely off your head and all around you and all the rooms around you, all you can hear is the screams and the shouts of the actual people that got mental issues and you're in here, slowly you'll start to go mad as well. And they used to do horrendous things. The abuse, like sexual, physical, and then testing things on people, frontal lobe, lobotomy, and just all sorts of horrible, horrible things. And then coming back to this room and every single night, spending your life in here, feeling horrendous, knowing there's nothing wrong with you, but you're stuck here, you're stuck here forever. Right. Still hunting, I feel like I've got lost. I keep coming up against loads of little bits 
of amazing architecture. And we're just trying every single door as well. So like I said, could be in here absolutely hours, just looking at empty rooms. But I know it's gonna be worth it. I know the hunt is definitely gonna be worth it. Right, it's just proof that you really need to look in these places to find stuff that's weird, strange. Now that door that's behind me there, we just came into this room and this room is very, very basic, empty and nothing in it. And then Rachel said to me, what's that on the floor? Now, at first glance, it doesn't look like it's anything, it's just the floor. But then look at this. What could possibly behind, be behind that door to make that mark? And then I open the door and it's like stepping back in time. Look in here. How freaky, I know. It's not really anything, but it's, oh God, this floor feels awful. Oh my God, it's moving. But there's cobwebs and this bit feels like it's been shut off to the rest of the world for a long, long time. The little old window, a little vent for, I'm guessing what was a fireplace at some point underneath there. And it's just disgusting. Look at it. It's awful. But like I said, if you don't look, you wouldn't even know things like this were here. And you can see the original chisel marks on the brick from the 1800s when this place was put together. It's amazing. Right, so we're back at the big central bit. Now we were on the next level up. We've made our way down. And this, I'm guessing, is the entrance into the big room we were looking down on a minute ago. It's like a really weird reception area to get into it as well. Let's have a look through here. Yeah, it is. That just gives you an idea now. I'm having to be careful with the torches because we've only got one of these today. So I can't really have it as bright as possible, otherwise it's gonna go off. But if you look at this, it almost feels, oh, there is a door there. It feels like these are almost fake walls. Oh, look, I've not noticed this, look. I wonder who that is. I don't know if that's a fella or a woman. Can't quite tell. I thought it were a woman at first, but I'm not sure, so sure now, a bit manly features. I think there will be one at the other side as well, look. Yeah, there is. Oh, this one has got a mask. Oh, look, I wonder if these lights work. grand is this place seriously how amazing is this one room oh what is that little door it's a little hidden door well it's not so hidden but there's a door oh god it won't oh, it's into a little empty storage space but you just wonder what that was used for originally what was kept in there? Now there is another door in this corner and one in that corner. So I'm gonna go and check those out. I'm gonna also read that plaque that I was telling you about up there without showing it yet. Cause I don't wanna give out away where we are. Now I've just checked that door at that side and it's locked. Just now it's the sort of like velvet um, curtains, massive long curtains as well. And there is another one of those doors over here as well. But I'm guessing it's a similar situation where there's nothing in here, apart from a bit of damp. But it does make me wonder what this room was used for. I'd love to know. Right, so back in this central area, heading down the stairs again. Now, I don't know where to go from here. But look at the floor, look at the tiles in here. I don't know whether we head towards the light or head towards the darkness. But either way, oh, look at this. The designs on the ceiling as well. But this gives you a better idea of 
how high that bit goes up. And imagine if you were a patient and you want to chuck yourself off, you could seriously do some damage down here. So that's why those bars are there. I'm going to stick my head through this way. I'll lock pillars through here and see what's in this bit. I don't know if this is the right way. I don't think it is. I think the central way is back the way we've come, but I'm still going to stick my head round here. Right, heading from here, I've actually just found what looks like the entrance to the cellar. Look at Look at it down here. I don't know if you can get through yet. I've not checked this bottom door. But it looks extremely creepy. It's actually all lit up. The electrics are on and the lights are on and everything. Ah, look at what I've just found in this corner. I'm gonna turn my, oh no, I can't turn the torch off. Look at this bit here. It's the old lift, but it's blocked up there. It's almost like the, is it the choke? I want to say the choke. I always get this bit wrong. In Matilda. But yeah, look at it in here. Look at the size of that door. It's massive. It's the only way we... Oh, this is spooky. Yeah. Down here. This is creepy as anything. Cellars are creepy, but cellars for the asylum are even more creepy. Especially when there's water running down out of pipes and stuff. I'm gonna check these doors out. Right, this bit is more than creepy. Not just because we're in the cellars still. It's the noise. There's a like an electric buzzing, but water pouring as well. Now, these were used as like the, the pay office and things like that. But it's worrying because I can hear electrics and water, which is usually not a good sign at all. I want to see where it's coming from without getting electrocuted to death. But, I think it's through this door here. Oh my God. Oh my God. Look at this. Look at the old bath there, but look at the water pouring straight onto the electrics. In such an amazing old Victorian bathroom. I'm getting out of here though. I don't like this at all. Right, seriously, I need to get out of this bit because the floor is soaking. You can hear the electrics running and that water is just pouring out. And obviously, it's before we got here, it was like this, but we need to make sure somebody's told about that once we've left. Right, we're both safe. We're both out of the cellar. That was, that was worrying. Back in this section again. I'm gonna head the other way this time. But <laughs> we're both absolutely panicking. There's nothing worth, worse than water than an electric together. I'm tripping over my words now. Anyway, let's get going the other way. Right, like I said, we've come through that secondary door, through along past all the consulting rooms where they would have gone and spoken to the doctors and then on into this. Look at it in here. Look at the ceilings. Look at these stairs. How amazing is this woodwork? It is unbelievable. This place needs to be saved just for this set of stairs. That is unbelievable. And the ceilings and the light fixtures I'm sure that's called something like Vaseline glass or something like that. It's beautiful. I do love this. Now it's looking like through there is similar. And this is the mail room. Let's have a look. Can we get in? Oh, this is the entrance way, look. 
Now I am a bit worried because I can hear a sensor noise and I don't know whether it's a silent alarm noise. So we need to whiz round here quite quick. Right, we made our way up from the reception, which is behind that door, which is where all the woodwork was, and into this. Now this is amazing. So I was telling you about the bits, about them throwing themselves off. Now this is like, if you think about a prison, this is the central walkway of a prison, but obviously it's a mental institute, and this is huge. I don't think you understand how big this area is and how high that goes up. Look at it. Those, this section here, I would say between that floor and that floor is probably 10 to 12 feet high. And then you've got another one up there and then another one above, which you can't quite see. So yeah, as you can see, it's pretty amazing. And there's all the pillars all the way around. It's the central area, so you've got, it's like a big cross. So when we look, look, if you look on this map again, I've got to be careful, I will show it you. You're sort of in this bit here. So you've got one wing coming off there, one off there, one from there, and where we've come from, which is this bit. So as you can see, it's massive. Now I thought I heard something then, but I want to get around and see as much as I can. But this is like something you've never seen in any other asylum in the UK that's this big. It's amazing. Now this corridor is nothing special. Well, it sort of is, because once again, it makes me think of the, like the locked rooms of the asylums, because they've got the, a lot of them have got the gaps again above the doors. But there's something a bit freaky about this corridor. It feels a little bit wrong. And one of the things that makes me feel like that is this way out sign up here. Now, you might not think this is freaky, but any sort of horror film, and it's based in like a hospital or something, there's always one sign that sort of flickers and looks a bit weird. And this is that sign. But yeah, I just wanna have a look in. It says consulting rooms, but I'm sure these were the lockups sort of quite thick doors and small rooms so they would have been shut in here like I said that would have been the area for them to get the ventilation or whatever and then they would have been shut in this little room but if you look this is just on one floor there's a corridor full there that way and it continues right down here and then they'll probably be exactly the same on every single wing so we've just found a little bit of a back set of stairs. Now, I don't know if this will take us. I don't think that will open because I reckon that's, that's to outside, possibly. I don't know if this will take us up to the next set of bars that we were looking up at a minute ago because I can't really work out how to get up there. And the thing is, this place obviously was made hard to get in and out of because it was an asylum. And I was right about all the floors having the, the cells and things, the sleeping areas or whatever you want to call them on every single floor. So think how many people were housed in this place. Now look at this. If you've ever thought of a prison, but with the nice soft edges, this would be it. This is like the closest to a prison you can possibly get without it being a prison. And they say that mental health is for the people to be looked after, but it's not, it's to be locked away. Right, we're heading back because that end door was locked, but hopefully on the next floor up, we'll be able to get out onto one of the landings. But Rachel, just as we were walking along, got what she said was like, almost a little bit of air blowing on her ear. Her hair moved next to her ear and there was nothing that should have caused that. 
which is all a bit freaky when you're in somewhere like this. Right, we're out onto one of the landings. Now this, like I said, is looking down to where we were a minute ago. And if you just, it's really hard to film. So I've got to put my arms through the holes. Now that bit up there was for the special secu seclusion because I've been somewhere before where they put all the worst inmates or whatever you want to call them up at the top. Now I think there's some stairs up around this corner to get up to them, which is what I wanted to get to in the first place. But it's just all a bit freaky and they've look, they've blocked it off. Let's try and stop people going up that way. Now whether we can get up is another thing because I think this door is going to be locked. Right, so this lock can be undone by the little latch inside there. And it's almost like emergency brake glass and it had already been broken. So I managed to get my finger in and open that lock, which then takes us up to the most secure unit at the top of the building. Now this bit may be locked by the looks of things. Oh no, it isn't. There's a lock on the door, but the latch is off. Look at this, this is to stop you throwing yourself. Now it may be different in here. It might not have been for the secure unit. Oh, wait a minute. It is locked. It's locked there. So let's have a look at these doors. Let's see if we can get through here. I think this is just the lift workings. Oh, wow. It's the lift workings, but there's a big old suitcase in here. What else? Now that's probably the top of the lift there, look. Oh, this little Victorian walkways. I'm just gonna go up to the end. Oh, and have a quick look. Like it on here because it's a bit wobbly and there's cobwebs everywhere. Now, look, you can see the old Victorian walls, some sort of black tar that's run down it. Oh, I'm breathing in cobwebs left, right, and centre, and it's been bricked up. So, what's behind that wall that they don't want you to see? Yeah, I felt that. <laughs> I'm gonna make my way back and see if that other door opens. Right, so this door brings you out into the toppermost section of that that we were stood at the bottom of a minute ago. It feels really weird with this round at the top of your head, knowing why it was there as well, to stop people throwing themselves off. Now there is a door here. This one opens. Oh, it's another one. Oh. Rachel just shit herself because that spider just flew out. Jesus, made me, made me scared. All right, this is another bit of the attic. Obviously, they've been using it for their computer systems and one thing or another. So this is the bit, probably. Oh God, it's very squeaky. This is the bit that will be blocked off and if you can see all the cobwebs in here. Nobody's been in here for a very, very long time. It goes on and on and on by the looks of things. I'm just gonna whiz to the end and have a quick look. Now, I don't think you realize how far I've come along here. All right, you can just about, you can't even, no, that's not even the door. It's beyond there where I've come from. And it goes on. And then round there as well but there's no real floor boards to walk on, so I'm not gonna go any further than that. But this is mega creepy. Imagine what they used to do in the nooks and crannies of this abandoned asylum, out of the way when no one was looking. How much abuse, how much violence, how many experiments went on in all these little places. I can hear the 
creaky floorboards under my feet and there's only three that I can walk along and then the rest I literally would just drop through the floor. Oh no, I'm down to two now. Right, I'm gonna go and try one of the other doors. Right, there appears to be loads and loads of books. Now, whether that was just for the people that stayed here to read or if they've been brought here afterwards as storage, I don't know. I've got a feeling, oh, this one is open. What's in here? Oh, this looks very old and spooky. Look at it in here. Look at these little old doors. This is weird. This is almost like a dormitory. You can imagine all the beds being put here. And then there's some more stairs. Where can these stairs possibly go? And what is in these little doors as well? Is that just into the roof space? Yeah, that's probably where I was looking along a minute ago. But let's have a look up here. What could be up here? Well, that's not what I expected. It goes down. It goes up a little, up a little bit. And then down, oh God. This is one of the creepiest corridors I've ever been along. Oh, look. 1960. Somebody's written on here. In 1960 now. I just can't imagine what would happen if my torch goes on this bit. I'm going to absolutely shit my pants. Look at it on here. This is so creepy. When were these things written on here? I don't even know what that says. Does that say? Does that say buggery? Can't say. Is it butchery? I'm not even sure what that says. 1983. I wonder who was put up here. Look at these. This is mad. This is one of the... Oh, this is a toilet. Oh, there's spiders and cobwebs everywhere. Can you imagine staying up here? Fucking hell, what was that bang? Right, Rachel's not even here. She's around that corner. And there are... A bang behind me, I didn't like that at all. But yeah, imagine. Oh, what's this say here, look? Three back, summit, summit. Four braids. Four summit nails. What does that mean? Like they're outside each of the rooms. Like they're there for a reason, I don't know why. Look. 1996, so quite recently, 2005. That could just be somebody writing on. 1950. Why were they always? Why were they up here? What were they putting them up here for? There's got to be a reason. Like, don't get me wrong, a lot of these, like 2013 and stuff like that, are probably just people that have sneaked in. But what are the ones from like, the 1950s? Does that say something Mrs. Liam or not sure? And it's all on this wall as well. It's the little ones I'm looking for, to be fair. All the little writing, because that seems to be the oldest ones. 1969, age 21. Jay Stewart. What's that? Plumber, age 24, 1949. July 22nd, 1949. Oh, is this one? What's this say? Oh my God, my torch is gone. My God, I'm gonna have to... <laughs> She's... You're gonna have to bring me a torch. Right, I've been back and got a different torch. I'll quickly look at these bits. See what's these through this door. That's where we got to look. Now look at that. I'm trying to see a date on it, I can't. But that, if anyone can decipher what that says, I'd be really interested to know what that what that's all about. But yeah, look. Oh my God. Oh my God, this is fucking freaky. Oh, the graffiti on the walls up here. 1874, that's definitely not from 1874. 
1980. Why does some of them say electrician? I don't really understand. I don't really get it. And then along into this section. This door has got a key in it. another record section. I don't think there's a great deal in there. And then this room here is a similar sort of situation. It is one of the freakiest corridors I've ever been on. And where this goes... Oh, wait a minute. Oh, what a shame that's locked. That's the roof access. I don't want to, thing is I don't want to leave Rachel, but I want to see where this goes. It goes down, right down, it's, it's in the tower. I've not even seen a tower in this building. I reckon it just goes to an exit, I'm going to have a quick look. Right, that's the stairs. I've just come down. It's brought me out. It's one of the creepiest libraries. Look at this. Journal of Psychomatic Research, 1989, 1978, 1974. Oh my God, this is, this is like something out of a horror film. Look at the state of it in here. Now I've left Rachel upstairs. I, I don't feel like I can leave her very long because this this is awful. I don't know. I don't like it myself. So she must be absolutely shitting her pants. I need to get out of here. Look, it's got another one of those break glass things on it as well. Because you're not supposed to have access to these stairs. And look, it's been bricked up at one point and then reopened again. I'm just going to quickly look through here. through there and that one's locked right I'm getting back up these stairs and getting out of here into a different bit this is totally out of my comfort zone I'm creeped out and she's waiting for me and I've got about five floors to get up so I'm gonna run oh god out of breath I'm back on the corridor and I'm gonna go to a different part with Rachel. Right. God. So this is where I've just come through from. If you notice, there's like a little peephole through to that room. All the little bits around the edge. But then the freaky thing is, there's a locked door there. And a locked door there. What are they keeping behind these doors? What is in there? It's just all very creepy. And there's writing on the floor in here like there was on the walls in there. There's on some of the doors. I'm guessing that's like sizes of things. I'm not sure. But this place has got me proper shook up. Right, what we've both just been saying is we've been fine in the rest of the building. We've got up to this bit. We both feel unbelievably uncomfortable. And I mean, not just a little bit. And I go to some really spooky places, but that has to be by far the scariest bit of building I've ever been in. Right, we've just come up this corridor, come to this mirror and we, neither of us like the look of it. Just seemed a bit weird. Now, on the other side, something's been boarded over. And there's some weird bits that just look like vents at the bottom. But it just once again made me feel a bit weird about it. It just doesn't look right at all. Now if I just get you to hold that. Now the way to find out if it's a two-way mirror is if you just hold the torch up, that's it. If your finger doesn't touch, that means it's a two-way mirror. If you look, you can see a gap 
in between my finger and that. That's a dodgy mirror, that is. Something not right about it at all. Where are we now? Well, we're back to where we've just come from. Back at the top of the segregation bit. So we're gonna head back down and head towards where I think the dining room is. Right, we're back where we were before. I'm gonna head up to where the dining room is. Now, let's have a look at the ceilings in this place. Might have a look up around there in a minute as well. At the moment, I just want to see what it's like in here. See if they've kept the period features or if they've just stripped it out and made it modern. Oh, this torch, I don't know why, it just makes things even spookier than the big one. Oh, wow. Now I'm going to need the big one to light it up in here and show you properly. Right, I can show you a little bit better now. Look at it in here. Look for a start, look at the grand doors all around the ceiling. Now this looks really strange in here. I can imagine, I suppose they would have had the tables in this section and then he would have come round through here and it would have been almost like a, well not a buffet service, but a bit like your school dinners. Say, I want pie and peas and some of Oh, you can get a meal deal. <laughs> but the thing is, this has been a more, more recently this has been a proper hospital. So things will have changed over many, many years. But it still just seems very odd. And this bit must have been had, had this layout before because it's got the original features around the top of the room, all the way around the top. So I'm guessing it's just this bit that's been added because this bit in the middle is original. Right, heading back out of the dining room. And this is the bit where I said I'd try and get up before we went. So I think we're done, we're both feeling very weak. I don't know if you heard that noise down there then. Definitely a click or a bang or something down there then. But we're both feeling ridiculously on edge. I, and it's, oh, oh God, I'm sort of glad the lights are coming on now. What's in here? <gasps> That's a bit weird. That's a bit fucking weird. Oh, it's a very big anticlimax. Oh, actually, it's not. Look at this. Look at this fireplace. It's quite hard to show you with this torch because it's very it points in one direction, but I've got a fireplace at this end. Oh, I've just been told there's a car outside. Oh, it looks like the security van. It's there, look. Just heading off down there, doing his rounds. Gotta be really careful. Because if he catches us, we're in trouble. Heard he's a bit of a feisty one. Right. I reckon this was like the governor's room, me. I reckon this was the big boss's room. And he'd sit on here and they'd come and like, plead their cases. I know they weren't in prison. I keep saying this. I know I keep saying that like they'd plead the cases or whatever, but they still would do that. They'd talk to him and like on the sort of doctors, if the doctors thought that he might be close to being able to come out or whatever, they'd come and say whether they were, it was like the governor, it was almost like prison. And they'd come and sit in rooms like this and talk to him and they'd be like, yeah or nay, and sit in front of a board or whatever. So this would have been the big guys important room I think. Anyway, I think we're about done. And like I said, I don't want to stay here much longer. I feel horrible, especially after that little corridor and them steps and down to that little book room. That was so weird. Right, that was probably one of the scariest places I have ever, ever done. I am so glad Rachel came with me because if I'd been in there by myself, got up on that corridor and down those stairs, and in that cellar, I don't think I could have stayed in there very long. That was really, really scary. Anyway, it will be back with Andy next week. Obviously, we do go away from time to time. I'll go on holiday, he'll go on holiday, he'll have family stuff and things. So there's always going to be times where it's just one of us. Well, it's going to be me, to be fair. 
But yeah, Andy will be back next week and hopefully you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you soon. Love you all. Bye bye. Keeping that bit in. <laughs>